Godzilla is back for the 31st time. <laughs> this time directed by controversial director Hideko Anno and Shinji Ikakuri. Well, he's not controversial, he's actually quite well-renowned. He's very well-renowned. Well um, he did the anime series Neon Genesis Evangelion, which, um, which is... Uh, we're big fans of. I'm so fucked up. <laughs> yes, very, very big fans of... Uh, yeah, anyway, so this is his first live-action feature film. It's a reboot of the series, and it follows the Japanese military and politicians, mainly yeah. politicians, as a big monster appears in the ocean and starts heading towards Tokyo, and them kind of trying to deal with the situation and Godzilla slowly evolving over time. First thing off the bat, compared to like the American films, which is just pure action, this film is a lot of dialogue. Yeah, I think, like, I wouldn't call this an action film. Not at all, no. Like, there are action pieces. This is more like a disaster film. A very yeah. grounded uh, disaster film. And in that way, it very much it harkens back to the very first one, which is very much about, you know, the fears that, you know, the atomic bomb had in Japan, all kind of uh, emulated by this big, you know, atomic breathing uh, behemoth. Mm. And this one has its own kind of legacy. Totally. This film has a lot of illusions, and it's really like an allegory for, like, the 2011 mm. earthquake, uh, which resulted to a tsunami, which resulted in a nuclear power plant about to um, yeah. explode in Japan, which was not great. It was a terrible disaster. And this film really kind of... A lot of the imagery is reflecting that disaster, you know. And um, this film won a bunch of awards in Japan. The Japanese prize, I can't remember what it's I called. I didn't actually know that. But it was the Japanese equivalent of the Oscars. It won seven awards though, total, including oh, shit, Best really? Director, Best Film, yeah. So it's really highly regarded in Japan. There's a lot of cutaways to people. It's very, it's a very human film in a yeah, lot of ways. very personal. And there's a lot of cutaways to, you know, crowds and people kind of helping out in the kind of disaster relief kind of way. Mm. Um, and Godzilla is, it's not like a big monster it's more like a, it's a disaster it's Godzilla at the, at the beginning of the story is not the typical Godzilla you know throughout the story he's slowly evolving so by the time they're throwing like bombs on him he immediately has a response to that you know he's evolved to the situation and that kind of made him really terrifying for me yeah I mean, yeah visually he's terrifying from the yeah. start the first time I saw him I was like for sake I like, grabbed Sanjay's <laughs> knee it was, it was really one of creepy. the things <laughs> I just love about this Godzilla like the design is just the most visceral the most macabre version of Godzilla I, that's ever been in the older versions of Godzilla, he's he can be really, really cheesy. And none of that this time. This is the walking embodiment of the apocalypse. Mm. The director Arno working on Evangelion. The film actually works like a live action adaptation of yes, the series because um, much so. You know, the episode will work like they see it coming, they have the plan figure out what to do, and then the their action at the end. And the movie's like a long version yeah. of the episode. This is probably the best representation of a real-life Evangelion. You know, and the way that it's edited, and the cinematography, mm. everything about it, um, if it were, you know, in Evangelion, it would be, it would exactly be yeah. an episode. Like, it wouldn't look out of place at all. There's always something going on shot-wise. Mm. And yeah, it just makes it a really visually interesting film. Speaking of which, the effects were kind of hit and miss mm. a mix of uh, cgi and practical there are some gorgeous shots yep. there are also some ones that are just a bit goofy yeah as previously mentioned the main characters in this film are basically a bunch of politicians and a, a big part of the film is just focused on them kind of in boardrooms discussing yeah, a lot of boardrooms yeah. i hope you love boardroom discussions because mm. there's a lot of them yeah and they're just talking about the problem like how do we talk to the public how do we kind of address the situation with the yeah. media, you know, cutting to interviews? That's and, really, um, that's actually a really big part of it is like the weight of every decision that's made. The whole, the whole film is about the bureaucratic process behind like every decision that goes into, mm. you know, dealing with a disaster. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, that's what the characters kind of show. Yeah, and a big theme about it is kind of like the new taking over for the old, you know, because like mm. all the older senior characters are kind of like out of their depth. But I wonder if it's like, for Japan, it's sort of like a bit of commentary on like yeah. how the, the problem was handled with this earthquake. I feel like it is a very political film, even though it's a monster film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind mean, of like old school George Romero for zombie films, you know? Yeah, kind of like a yeah. That's, that's a done. good comparison. Mm. And um, later on, the the relationship between the the Americans and the Japanese, I think that's a really important part of the film as mm. well. And those of you who have seen Evangelion, there's a particular episode which, when I saw it, it seemed like a bit of a not a, not a slight against Americans, but just a kind of a commentary on their position and mm. a degree of arrogance that they hold. And I feel like there's a little bit of that in here. Totally, yeah. Like acknowledging them as allies, but then also showing that despite their power, 
when they meddle in something, no matter how good their intentions are, sometimes it can, they you can know, fuck it up. Yeah, they can <laughs> just exacerbate the problem, um, which is one of the themes that I thought, you know, really stood out. Mm. One thing negative for me is that um, as an English speaker, I felt like I missed out on a lot the way the subtitles go across the screen. Mm. There's a, a m- there's a lot of stuff on the screen yeah, to yeah. read. For me watching it, I feel like I'm missing important information. Yeah, yeah, you know. can be quite overwhelming. Hands down, my biggest complaint about this film is that the whole film's about two hours. I think it's just under two hours. And the first hour, it's it's pretty flawless. Mm-hmm. The pacing's great. But I'd say in the last act and leading up to the, the, the final, final part, scene, yeah. the climax, it slows down a bit too much. Yeah, yeah. A bit too much for me. I think it does drag down the pacing and the immediacy of the overall film. Um, and that does hurt it a bit in my eyes. The way they handled the final encounter... When it actually ended, I was like, oh, okay. Mm, yeah. I kind of was a bit disappointed, you know, with how things got resolved. Yeah. And saying that, the last shot, uh, Arno yeah. couldn't help himself. Had to add in one last final fucked up shot, and you're just like, oh, the fuck, you know? We walked out like, the fuck does that mean? Yeah. What the fuck? We, and I loved we, it, because yeah. that's fucking even Evangelion, just fuck shit, so yeah. <laughs> so. Um, hopefully, because it's got um, a lot of awards and stuff, there is... A sequel. I oh, hope yeah, a sequel. I definitely would like a sequel to this movie, um, especially because that last shot was like, well, "There needs to be more now. Like, we, yeah. we need more." <laughs> so yeah, in conclusion, um, I really love this movie, and I can see now why Godzilla is referred to as King of the Monsters because mm-hmm. this was such a really freaking scary film. Complaints for me, like I said, the subtitles were too quick. There was a character in the film who was meant to be next in line for presidency, and when she spoke English, it was so broken English, it was very immersion breaking. <laughs> also. There's the, the atomic breath scene. We've mentioned that. Oh, yeah. The scene where Godzilla finally lets loose the atomic fire. <laughs> Fuck, the damage is so massive. It's yeah. horrifying. Like, this um, is... I'd say this is easily, like, the best atomic breath scene yeah. out of any Godzilla film. It's just so haunting. And there's a shot where it's just black and you can see Godzilla in the yeah. darkness. It's yeah. so cool. Um, but, yeah, that seems like the only big scene, you know? Overall, I like the movie, but there was no other scene yeah you know, like no i agree with one that. that i would look up on youtube i have to see this part again you know it was just the atomic breath was the only standout scene um but in saying that still a great movie you should check it out it's not the action film you're probably expecting but i think it's a very good uh politically kind of you it's know it's a really great commentary on how people reacted to disaster in japan um and how they kind of interpreted that um and it's just interesting from that angle. get out of my brain so yeah it gets a, it gets a seven for me seven out of ten seven out of ten yep yeah, pretty much everything that you said. The the main thing that bumped it down a bit for me was the pacing, which is a bit of a shame, but it's still a. I'd still really recommend it if you're into monsters or just disaster movies in general, or you just like watching uh, people react to things, you know, in a kind of a real grounded manner. Um, I will also give it a seven. Sweet. Oh, yeah, watching we've wanted to review this for a while we saw it on the big screen a while ago yeah, and it's coming out in blue right now so yeah check it out some good shit and uh yeah thanks for watching guys like subscribe do all, do all the rest give me some of that lcl bro oh yeah oh yeah tumbling down <laughs> love it this is people <laughs> drink it, bitch. Oh, fuck. i'm not fucking drinking <laughs>